In this question, we're trying to determine the minimum force F that needs to be applied perpendicular to the incline in order to prevent the crate from sliding down the incline. In order to do that, we have to draw a free body diagram illustrating the forces that are acting on the crate, which we have represented as this red dot. Now, of course, gravity is pulling the crate straight down, so we're going to draw a force acting straight down, and we will label that MG. In addition, the surface of the ramp is pushing perpendicularly up on the crate. This is known as the normal force, which we will just call N. We also have static friction, as noted in the question. The box is being pulled down the ramp by gravity. Static friction responds by pressing up on the block. So we have static friction preventing or trying to prevent the block from sliding down the ramp. We're going to call that F sub S. And then finally, we have that force applied perpendicularly to the crate. We're going to draw that right here and just call that F. And our job is to find that force. Now, often when solving for an unknown force using a free body diagram, it is useful to compile the information into a table that looks like the following. This table is going to organize the four forces along the left column, and then we're going to break those forces into their X and Y components. Now, you have probably learned that in order to find an X component, you're going to multiply the force by the cosine of a particular angle. We'll talk about that angle in just a moment. And for the Y component, you'll multiply by the sine of that same angle. The key is to figure out the appropriate angle. Now, it's important to measure your angle relative to the positive X axis. So this axis right here will represent our positive x axis and we want to measure the angle to each of the forces relative to that axis so for example if we look at the static frictional force we can see that the static frictional force is pointing exactly on the positive x axis so the angle for that would just be zero degrees there is a zero degree angle between static friction and the positive x axis so in the chart we're going to take our force which we have denoted f sub s and we're going to multiply that by the cosine of zero degrees and then for the y component we'll take that same force and multiply by the sine of zero degrees. Now, the sine of zero degrees is actually zero, so we can actually knock this out of our table. Let us next go to the normal force, and you want to ask yourself, well, what's the angle between the positive x-axis and the normal force? And that angle is, of course, 90 degrees. Right there is a 90-degree angle. So for the normal force, we're going to go in here, and we're going to write normal force times the cosine of 90. That will be the x component. And then normal force times the sine of 90 for the y component. The cosine of 90 is 0, so we can eliminate that from our chart. And the sine of 90 is 1. So we have the normal force times 1 which is really just the normal force. And going back to the static frictional force, the cosine of zero is equal to one. And so Fs times one is just Fs. So we can simplify the chart a little bit further. Now we have the magnitude of gravity pointing straight down, but we need to figure out that angle. This becomes a little bit trickier in figuring out the angle, but this angle right here between gravity and the negative y axis is the same as the ramp angle. So that's 35 degrees right there. We want to measure our angle, again, relative to the positive x axis. Now you can do this in two ways. You can go the long way and measure your angle that way in a counterclockwise direction, or you can go the kind of shortcut way in a clockwise direction to get to the angle. And if you do it clockwise, you just have to make sure you use a negative angle. So if we look carefully, 90 degrees gets us to the negative y-axis, but we have to go an additional 35 degrees to get to the gravitational force. The total angle is 90 plus 35, which is 125. But again, it's negative because you're going clockwise. So for gravity, we're going to go into our table and we're going to write mg times the cosine of negative 125 degrees. And then for the y component, it's going to be mg times the sine of negative 125 degrees. Now, let us be careful with the force that we have labeled F. We have it directed straight down, which is the correct direction. But we want to make sure that we align the tail of that force at the origin. So we're just going to slide that force over here. That would be the more appropriate orientation of that force. We want the angle between the positive x-axis and that force F. And if we measure that angle, it is negative 90 degrees. So we're going to go into our chart for the x component. We're going to do F times the cosine of negative 90 90 degrees and then we have f times the sine of negative 90 degrees and the cosine of negative 90 degrees is zero so that eliminates this from our chart right here and the sine of negative 90 degrees is negative one so you have f multiplied by negative one which would actually just be negative f so we're going to clean up our chart a little bit here and write this as negative f for the y component 
So our chart is complete. We're now moving on to the next phase of this problem. After completing the chart, you're going to want to take the sum of the forces in the x direction. And because this crate is in equilibrium, we can set the sum of those forces equal to zero. And then we're going to do the same thing with the sum of the y forces that will also be set equal to zero let's go to the x direction first we have these two forces remaining in our chart so we would have mg times the cosine of negative 125 degrees and then we're going to add that to f sub s and then set that equal to zero we'll do the same thing now with the y forces we're going to add these three forces and set them equal to zero Great, so now we have our Newton's second law expressions set up. We're ultimately, remember, trying to solve for this force right here. But before we do that, we have to play around with our x direction equation. We have this static frictional force in the equation, and we probably have learned that the static frictional force is equivalent to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. So we're going to make a little substitution for the static frictional force. And if we study the x direction equation right now, we have an option here to actually solve for the normal force because we know the mass that's given in the problem. G is 9.8 meters per second squared, and the coefficient of static friction was also given in the question as 0.3. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the given quantities. Now we could pick up our calculator, make sure it's set to degree mode, and enter this into the calculator. When you do that, you get about negative 16.86, and then we have the plus 0.3n. Next, to solve for n, we'll add the 16.86 to both sides. And that gives us 0.3n is equal to that 16.86. And then let's divide both sides of the equation by 0.3. And we can see that the normal force is equal to 56.21. And because it's a force, this comes out in newtons. Now, this is pretty nice because we can actually go back up to the y direction equation and we could substitute in the normal force that we just calculated. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and we're also going to plug in the mass that's given. And now we'll pick up the calculator, and we'll enter this in, and that gives us negative F plus the 56.21, and then this turns out to be a minus 24.08. And now we're in business. We can easily solve for negative F. Perhaps the easiest way to do that is to just add F to both sides of the equation. So it cancels out here, and then zero plus F on the right side is just F, and then we just combine these terms, and we get our final answer of approximately 32.1. This is a force, so it comes out in Newtons.